Hey, I want to move on to a really important topic because over 20 million Americans struggle with addiction. Maybe it's alcohol, drugs, or even prescription pain medications. And now one rehab facility is treating addiction in a new way that recently has been making headlines because it has a very unique approach. High Sobriety is the first rehab center that is now treating addiction with marijuana. Joining us now is the founder of High Sobriety, Joe Schrank, along with psychotherapist and addiction specialist, Dr. Mike Dow. They both have some different stances on this topic. Uh, welcome to you both. I think it's really important, and obviously there's a reason why we've been talking a lot on this show about addiction, because so few people seek treatment, number one, and we do need as many tools in the arsenal as possible. But, but Joe, I want to ask you, how did you even begin to think of, oh, you know what, let's use marijuana as not a gateway into drugs, but a gateway away from them. Yeah, we at High Sobriety, we believe it's an exit drug or can be utilized as an exit drug. You just made a very valid point that people find the point of entry into treatment is often very daunting for people. People who have severe addictions, whether it's alcohol, opiates, whatever it is. So the fear of the detox and the idea of going into treatment is often overwhelming. So people find it an easier way to start. My hope is, for a lot of them, especially for the younger people, that they do move on to cessation of all drug use or all impairment. But nobody's finding recovery if they're dead. 144 people a day are dropping dead of heroin and opiate overdoses. And if we can get some of those folks onto a harm reduction protocol, we can save and improve their lives. But aren't you treating an addiction with possibly a new addiction, though? Yes, yes, we are. We're treating an addiction that will kill you, an egregious, lethal addiction for a dependence on a product or on a substance that will not kill you. It's very important to understand, cannabis has no lethal dose. Alcohol kills 88,000 Americans a year. But you can also get a DUI on weed now, though. You can, and nobody's, okay. nobody's saying that they should behave recklessly while they're under the influence of a substance. Their behavior under the influence of a substance is very different than the ingestion of the substance itself. But, but to give you an idea of how far we've come, even in the world of medicine, quite frankly, Joe, 10 years ago, when this show, or right before the show just started, if you had come on stage and said, yeah, we're just gonna smoke marijuana and help people get off of drugs, I don't think we would have even let you in the building. Right. The mindset has changed, yeah. in, in fairness, quite a bit towards right. cannabis and some of its unique medical uses. Dr. Dow, you claim that, not so fast, marijuana as an exit drug, so to speak, is not something that you would necessarily support. Yeah, for me, when I treat somebody the most successful way I can treat somebody is by helping them to lead a productive life, better relationships, getting back into work. And I've also seen that marijuana, just like heroin, prevents people. And I have to say that the, the main- the, That's patently false. That, I mean, it's just a false, old idea about cannabis. You know, the truth of the matter is there are people who are cannabis users who lead productive lives. Heroin and cannabis are not the same thing. A lot of the population that I see are, are 18 to 30 year old men. So young adult, late adolescents, young adult men. If we can get them off heroin, booze, pills, et cetera, for three months, we're having a very different conversation with a very different person 90 days down the road if they're exclusively a medical cannabis user. As an ER doctor, you, you should, you, I'm sure you know, we, let's keep these people out of the ER. The overdose problem is not helping well, anybody. My, my question that I wanted to ask sober. is, as we know in medicine in general, the way that you really get to the bottom of an issue is with studies. I, I'm curious because yeah. you say you have a protocol. My concern would be if everyone just starts willy-nilly doing this and you just start saying, oh, you know what, let's just all start smoking weed. Right. Do you, are there any plans for even looking at formal studies yeah, at I mean, various I think protocols? That, I, mean, I can say pretty safely that we may be one of the very few uh, treatment programs that has a full-time researcher for this reason. We want to know what it's doing as much as anybody else wants to know what it's doing. When, it, when people bring this up, their beef is not with me. Their beef is with the U.S. government for scheduling this substance as a Schedule One drug, which means we can't do clinical trials with it. We We're relying on Israel for most of the information about what medical cannabis does and doesn't do.